Hey, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about portfolios. There are three things I want to cover. How to get started on a portfolio project, what is important for your portfolio, and what tools you can use. So let's just jump right in. All right, so there's a couple of different components to a portfolio. Um, this is one of my students' portfolios. So what we can see here is you have the actual portfolio site itself, right? So this is a little, you know, her logo, a little bit about her, um, some links to her Instagram and LinkedIn. There's a work page, which is the one we're currently on. There's an about page, a contact, and a resume. These pages are um, more than enough, right, to, to have your portfolio and to kind of explain um, what you do and provide the right information that you need to give. Aside from that, we have two case studies or two pieces of work. So when I talk about a case study, I'm talking about um, a piece of work that you've done that's not essentially correlated to like work you've actually done. So there's no real work that you did, but it's a project that you've created from scratch. So when I talk about portfolio, it's the page itself. When I talk about a case study, it's just the, the actual project that you're you're working on. So how can you get started on a portfolio? What you're going to need to get started is you're going to need um, to work on a case study because that's what goes into a portfolio. So to start on a case study, all you really need is to define a problem that you want to solve. So for example, Serena, um, she's an occupational therapist. So the problem she was solving was um, for children with sensory needs. Getting started is just as easy as defining a problem and then following the design process, right? So for her, um, she was trying to target children with sensory processing needs, ages 3 to 12, and reduce the difficulties they have with processing sensory input and improve daily function, right? So this is a little bit more complex and it has to do directly with her field. What I suggest is that you find an area that you're super passionate about or interested in and go and define a problem in that area. And that's for two different reasons. One, because when you start interviewing, you're going to walk through this portfolio on this case study and you're going to um, show enthusiasm if it's something you actually care about. And um, two, because if it's an industry that you care about, you most likely want to get a job in that industry. And having some case studies related to the industry will help you when you're interviewing for those jobs. So, for example, if Serena wants to go and work for um, companies that have to do with occupational therapy, now she has a case study that correlates to that industry. So that's basically it. You want to define a problem, right, and then go through the process, right? So that's everything from secondary research, competitive analysis, um, you can also, you know, extract some key insights, do some surveys, um, do some interviews, affinity mapping, right? The entire process, which, you know, there's a ton of videos about that, so I'm not going to go through it, through that in detail. Um, but, you know, you, you kind of go through that, you put it all together, and then you can put it into uh, a case study or a portfolio. So the second thing I wanted to talk about was what is important in terms of a portfolio? So when you're looking at a portfolio site, a lot of people want to code it themselves, add some cool animations and stuff like that. That's really not necessary. When interviewing and like looking at portfolios, people reviewing your portfolios have like a couple of minutes really max to go through this. So what's important is what's actually inside of the case study not the animations or you know any interaction or special thing you're going to add so as long as you have you know images and the, your process and descriptions of why you made the decisions you made that's what's important that's what's going to help me gauge right if you're a person that's going to be able to solve the problems you know that i'm trying to solve for my business and hire you as a junior ux designer so I would say focus on what's important, and that's the content of your case study, rather than building the portfolio website itself. You can always come back to it and, you know, redo your portfolio as many times as you want once you have that first job. And then the third thing that I wanted to talk about today is tools, right? What tools should you use to build your portfolio? Um, any portfolio builder or website builder um, 
is a good suggestion, right? I would not suggest that you, you know, do it from scratch. Um, UX Folio is one of my favorite tools just because it's an actual UX portfolio builder. So their um, templates and themes are very specific to um, what you're trying to do, which is great. And then, um, so UX Folio is one of them. Squarespace is another one, right? They're a website builder. So although not super specific to, um, you know, UX, they have portfolio templates you can look at and use. And then Webflow, um, this gives you the, cap the functionality to edit a little bit more than the other two, um, which can get tricky and messy, but um, it, it does allow you to customize a little bit more. So this, this is a good option as well. Most of the students that go through my course use UX Folio. You're able to connect your actual domain, so like that www custom name that you want .com to UX Folio. So it really looks like you know a, a professional um, portfolio. So I do um, recommend this one out of the three. If if I were to to do it myself now, I would use this. So thanks for watching. I'm glad today we were able to cover how to get started on a case study, what's really important for your portfolio, as well as tools. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session, there's a link in the description for that.